the first time buyers webinar. Welcome uh, in. Welcome, welcome. So today's special edition, we're going to go through the whole buying process from beginning to end. That way, when it's time for you to buy your next home, you're super educated and you're, you have all the information needed. Uh, once again, I'm Rich Jackson, a local real estate agent. I'm here accompanied by my partner in crime, uh, Mark Rocha. He's a loan officer with Nexa Mortgage. How you doing, Mark? Good, man. Good. Yeah. How are you? Good, man. Good. Did you get this information out? Oh, yeah. We got a lot of great information for you guys today. So I would just say uh, sit back, sit tight, and be ready for a bunch of um, jam-packed information on the buying process. All right. Well, let's jump into it, guys. So, you know, I get a lot of people calling me and, you know, people that are, um, you know, not too familiar with the process. And a lot of times people think, you know, the first step is to actually go out, just look at a bunch of houses, you know, mm -hmm. which is cool. You know, that's you the fun part. That is the fun part. And you got to have an idea of uh, what you want, you know, what's going to be the best home for your family and the best fit. But however, um, truth be told, the very truthful fact of buying a home, the first, first step is meeting with a loan officer, such as Mark Rocha, someone like that. I'll tell you why that is the first step and the importance. The reason you want to go ahead and uh, sit down with a loan officer, even when the thought is in your head that you may be interested in buying, is because, for one, you're not able to make an offer on a house once you do find that perfect house without the pre-approval. So say you go out looking at a bunch of homes and then you, you know, you and your family, you're like, you fall in love with the house. It's the perfect home. It's beautiful. Now you're not being, you're not pre-approved yet. So now it's a rush to go meet with the loan officer, uh, go through the whole pre-approval process. And nine times out of 10, if not 10 times out of 10, uh, the house is no longer available once you get approved because that process can take several days or a week, you know, to get pre-approved. So for one, you wouldn't be in a position to make an offer. And even just as importantly, you could, we could be out or you could be out looking at a bunch of houses outside of your price range or even maybe too low. So say you're out looking at a bunch of houses, you're going around looking at about 10, 15 houses, you find one just to realize once you get qualified that, you know, you qualify for less than the houses that you were looking at or vice versa. You know, you might be looking at homes, you know, thinking you want to stay around, say, 250000 and those are the houses you're looking at. Then you get pre-qualified and realize, wow, I can actually afford a $400,000 house. Um, and so now all that time was wasted before looking at the lower. So it's always good to be prepared uh, and just, just in case that time you do find the home you love. So that's the real reason of meeting with a loan officer. And Mark, a lot of times there's things that people may um, they may not be aware of. Maybe they need help with credit, right? Um, maybe uh, the income is not as uh, much as they need to, you know, they need to make more income. Maybe their debt is too high. But all those factors are great to know early on, because if you get ahead of them, you can start now with your loan officer, make a great plan, and then they'll walk you through the steps to where maybe two or three months down the line, you can qualify for your desired amount. Yeah, that's 100% correct. I mean, you don't go to uh, the grocery store unaware of your budget, you know, just uh, picking well, items and, and, huh? and hoping and hoping that the, the card works. You know, you don't you don't hit the car lot without knowing exactly how much you can buy. Very true. You know, you're going to start looking at all the Hellcats and realize, you know, you're getting a Honda Civics. And that's the most yeah. you can get. So you don't do that for those situations. You don't want to do it for home shopping as well. 100%. And it's good. And once you're pre-qualified, you know exactly what you're qualified for. You're going to know what, how much your monthly payments are. And it doesn't mean you need to rush out and hurry up and buy a house. That pre-approval letter, guys, once you get pre-approved, you got at least 90 days to go search for a home. Even longer, really. I mean, if mm -hmm. long as nothing's changing your credit, even after the 90 days, uh, there's nothing changing your credit or your, your situation, you, you just get a renewed uh, approval letter. So- it's always good in the beginning. So with that said, we're going to go into the first step of the process. Like I mentioned, getting pre-approved by the loan officer. And once you get the golden ticket from Mark, which is the pre-approval letter, mm -hmm. that's when the games begin, guys. And that's when the fun starts and the home shopping starts. And that's where I come in the picture, an agent like myself. Uh, so now that we know uh, based on your pre-approval letter, we got a price uh, qualification point. You know, you may say you're pre-approved to four hundred thousand. Um, so, as an agent, I my job is to listen to what type of house you're looking for, the criteria, how many bedrooms, all that stuff. And I'm 
my job is to find those properties and email them to you, you know, as you're also probably looking through Zillow and all these other sites and uh, Redfin and things like that. Um, our job is also to assist and help find you those perfect houses that fit your criteria. Uh, once we identify a few, you know, um, me, I like to set up a time, a day of the week that works for everyone. And we'll take that day and go see, you know, the houses that you are interested in just to see if the pictures truly do match up to seeing it on person. Right. Because a lot of times, you know, the pictures will tell one story of a house. It may look beautiful, but, you know, we know that's not the full story. There may be some parts of the home that aren't that are not in the pictures that may not be desirable. So it's always good to go see the home physically in person. And depending on the market, you know, the last three years have been pretty competitive. So um, I tell my clients and buyers, like, if you see something you really love, um, I would say let's be there within the first two days, as, if possible. Um, we really don't want to go past three or four days without seeing it, because even right now, houses are selling pretty fast, you know, and it, um, it can get very competitive. So, you know, within those first few days, we'll go take a look at the houses um, and just see which one is going to really fit fit your needs and uh, and really grab you. And I always know in the, in the past, um, I always tell families this, that you, it's something about it once you find that home. You know, we could see 10 houses, and but then as soon as we see the one that's for you, you usually know pretty quick, you know, you get the feel of the home, uh, you look at the kitchen, you're like, oh, you just you just start seeing images and seeing your furniture, seeing your how you can customize it and design that house and making it yours. That's when you know, and if everything feels good, that's when we discuss making an offer for that house. Now, once we make an offer, there's a few things that I'm, we're going to discuss prior to making the offer. Of course, as an agent, I'm going to connect with the listing agent to get as much information about what other offers they may have for that house. Um, and in, in addition to more details about the house, that's, um, you know, that's not shown online and in the notes. So, you know, there may be some circumstances about the home that's really important and, uh, and we should all be aware. And my job is to relay that to you to let you know the full story as far as I know about the property. Um, and then we just simply discuss, you know, the price that we'd like to offer for the house, uh, something that's going to be uh, you know, a good price that gives us a good chance of of, of winning the bid because a lot of times we're competing with other buyers for the same house. So price is very important. Um, also, too, the time of closing is usually standard 30 days or less. So 30 day close, we can do 45 is if for some situations, if the sellers uh, need more time in the house. So that's another thing. There's times to where the owners still live in a home and they may need another you know, a couple of weeks or a longer escrow. And we just kind of accommodate that if we can. So uh, we, we figure out the price, a good price, uh, the closing time. And this is important too, the earnest money deposit. Now, you probably haven't heard of that phrase or that term. It's also called EMD. And basically all that is, guys, the earnest money deposit is just a small portion of your down payment and closing costs. And it's typically about 1% of the offer amount. And what happens is, say we make an offer for 300000 for a house. So we'll just say, you know, we'll put down 3000 for earnest money. Now, that those funds are only to be deposited in at the title company only upon acceptance of the offer. So basically, once your offer is accepted, the 3000 will be deposited in at the title company and what that does it just shows that the buyer is it shows to the seller that the buyer is very serious they're putting up just a small portion of their closing uh um closing funds an up front and those funds will just stay there at the title company until closing day and then those funds funds will be applied to your closing cost basically so that's how it works it it it's not lost. You know, don't think uh, that money is gone. No, it goes towards your down payment and closing costs at the end. But however, again, it just shows how serious the buyer is. Uh, so once we put together those few terms, um, the price and the terms of it, um, I will email you. Um, those are email savvy, uh, you know, and if you're not, we can also accommodate that as well. We can also print out the documents, the the real estate purchase agreement is what it's called. That's the form we'll be completing uh, with your offer on it. 
it's called a real estate purchase agreement. And so, uh, like I said, it's, it could be emailed via DocuSign, electronic sign signature, or we can meet and uh, print it out and fill it out in person. Um, but yeah, it's, it's more or less 17 pages or more. It's a lot of verbiage in there. Uh, just know that all the verbiage is put there to protect the buyer, the seller, and the agent and all parties. That's the gist of a lot of the verbiage in there. The meat and bones of it, of course, is going to be the offer amount we're going to offer, um, the close, how much time, you know, we're going to give to close and the earnest money deposit. Now guys, um, so that's it. That's pretty much it. Once once we get that, uh, I send it to you, the paperwork uh, for you to approve and sign off on because we're going to need your signature on that offer amount. And then once I have that, that's when I send that offer, the real estate purchase agreement, along with your pre-approval letter that you got from Mark earlier. I'm going to put those together in an email form and send it off to the listing agent uh, to submit our offer for that home. And uh at that point, guys, we just sit back, you know, we, uh, we just cross our fingers, pray or whatever, you know, but honestly, I believe really deep in my heart that if it's meant for you, it, it will be meant for you. And if for some reason, you know, they have a higher offer, we just keep looking and find the one that is meant for you. You know, there may be some reason. That's what I believe. So, so I don't want people, I, you know, I, it, sometimes it could be tough, you know, you go for the house you want, but you know, with a lot of negotiations, we try to make the best offer so you do win that bid and get the home. That's what we're going for. Now, um, now I guess, you know, once that process is completed, you know, we wait a couple of days. The agent will let me know if the offer is accepted. And, uh, you know, I love the calls when we get and they say, congratulations, Rich, or, you know, your client's offer has been accepted for 123 Main Street. Right. When I hear that, I'm super excited. The very next thing I'm doing is hanging up the phone with that agent and calling you right away. Hey, we won the bid. Congratulations. You know, our offer was accepted and uh, we're going to open up what is called escrow. Um, and basically, guys, uh, it's, it's good to celebrate then, but we are just getting started now. <laughs> it, you know, after seeing the homes and you finding the home you really love, we made the offer already with the letter. Now, now we're accepted, and now we're going to go into what is called escrow. Escrow is just a period of time, um, <clears throat> the process, the sale of the house. So that's the period of time where a lot of, uh, you know, it's really a lot of investigation, uh, investigative process going on in that part of the that 30 days, you know, we're finding out it's all about the home. We're doing inspections. We're, we're, um, we're looking at the preliminary report, just getting all the information about this specific house. Uh, if it's in a, uh, if it's in an earthquake zone or if it's in a, um, in a flood zone, a fire hazard zone, I mean, we're going to know everything about this house prior to um, signing at the dotted line at the end and getting the keys. Now, once we are in escrow with the title company, within the first three days or less, um, that's when typically that earnest money deposit should be sent to the title company. Like I said in the beginning, if we're making an offer for a $300,000 home, a $3,000 check will be you know, either delivered uh, in person. Um, you could just write a check to the title company for the $3,000 and it'll be made out to that title company. Now, if your work, if the escrow is with, say, Chicago Title, you're going to make a check out to Ch Chicago Title in the amount of three thousand. Those funds again will be set sitting at Chicago Title. They will cash them at some point, so be sure those funds are available. And again, once at closing, that three thousand will go towards your down payment, and it'll, you know, so you'll 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 bring in a, less than three thousand because you already uh, deposited that. Um, so also, guys, very important, the first 17 days of every escrow, once you're accepted, the first 17 days are dedicated for us to do all the inspections of the house. So we're talking, uh, we're going to have a home inspector go out um, at, to the home and do a full home inspection. Um, I have a couple of different home inspectors if you ever need a referral for one, a good one. But yeah, we're going to get a home inspector and a termite inspector there within the first week, week first week and a half. Uh, because we really need to know what's going on with the house. It looks beautiful, but you know, we don't know everything about it. We're going to, and what they do is they check everything from the roof to the subfloor under the house and everything in between. So everything gets fully 
uh, inspected very thoroughly, not only by the home inspector, but again, by the termite inspector. Okay. Um, so those inspections are buyer's expense. So just keep in mind, uh, if, you know, once you decide to buy a home, um, you're going to have to, you know, need a little funds as well left over for your home inspection. Now those could range between maybe three to $500 for a full home inspection, um, and termite inspection. Right. Um, but what's going to, it's so worth it guys. So worth it. Cause you're going to get a full blown report. Uh, some of these reports can go 50 pages or so at some times, but we're going to know every single thing wrong with the home um, and the good things about the house, right? So we're going to uncover a lot. Uh, the termite inspector as well. He's going to go out, not only check for termites, termite inspectors are also checking for items that could lead to termites down the road, right? So uh, termite inspectors go under the home if they notice any leaks, um, if they notice anything funny going on, if the foundation looks a little funny, the termite inspector would even call those out. So, so again, we're getting many eyes on the house to make sure that it's going to be solid and uh, and well kept. Um, also, too, within that very first week of the escrow, we're you know we're excited. The offer is accepted, say a Monday. To, to usually by Tuesday, um, you will probably be on the phone with Mark, the lender or a loan officer. Because really quickly, that first week, uh, the appraisal will be ordered. So that's where your loan officer will come in and they will get that appraiser, appraisal ordered. I want to talk a little yeah. bit about that appraisal. Yeah. And that's a fee as well. So the first week, acceptance, um, earnest money within the first three days. Okay. And those funds you already have because those are, that's your down payment money. Just a portion of it is going to be sitting. And then appraisal will be ordered from, uh, from your lender. Right. Yeah. So when escrow is opened, um, I want you guys to understand that um, you guys are you as the home buyer are going to become the most popular person you've ever been to quite a wide range of people. Uh, your realtor will be reaching out to you. Your loan officer will be reaching out to you. Uh, the inspectors that you have going out there to to view this home that you're looking at purchasing will be reaching out to you. Title companies will be reaching out to you. Uh, everybody is going to be coming at you and it, be, and it can be overwhelming, but just at, try your very best to listen and break down exactly what each party wants and understand that each party is a different arm of this transaction. Mm. So as much and as convenient as it would be for all of us to be on the same page, it just is not the case. Mm. So if... <clears throat> kind of like what Rich was bringing up the appraisal. That is definitely something that we need on the lending side uh, because the bank wants to know what the value of the home is worth that they're lending money on. Okay. Um, and this goes for anybody that lends any money or you lend money to your family, you're going to want to give them 20 bucks. But if you know that, you know, they're only good for 10, you're not going to want to give them 20 bucks because you know, you're only going to get 10 back. So an appraisal is going to be ordered required you know, by, by the bank in order to learn the condition of the home, the value of the home, and, and whether or not any repairs are going to be requested or needed or anything concerning, okay? And this is strictly for the financing condition, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is why Rich said that the lender would be taking care of it because we, since we are the financing arm of this transaction, we have our conditions that need to be met. And that is a an appraisal report by a third-party uh, individual that goes out there and evaluates your home and determines its value, determines its condition level, and uh, determines whether or not it qualifies for whatever type of funding we're trying to get. Um, that is, again, on the financing arm. Like I said, you're going to be the most popular person to to quite a few people here. You might confuse the appraisal with the home inspection. That is something completely different. That is your report. The appraisal is my report. Um, you will be, you have access to both of them because you are paying for them. So they are both your report as far as possession, but as far as who they go to, the appraisal report goes to the lender or the bank, whoever you're using. The inspection report is going to go to you and your realtor to determine on your own, okay, your appraiser said it's good, but I have my own concerns because of the home inspector. Mm. So even if 
we order an appraisal, which happens as quickly as possible because they are not the quickest to get out there. Um, and when they inspect the home, they also require a little bit of time to write the report up before they get it back to us. So we want to do these things as quickly as possible because, again, like Rich said, we have a time parameter for our due diligence. And we want to make sure that you get all of the information you can within that time frame so you can decide, you know what, this home looked a lot better when we walked through. When we started tearing some of the, the makeup off here, it doesn't quite look like when we first met, you know? So, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. We, we want to make sure we do these things in a timely fashion so that we have all the information available to us to make the decision whether to move forward or to back out of this deal and maybe go and start shopping again. Mm -hmm. So that appraisal is ordered for the lending arm. Again, you, the realtor and the inspector will be something completely different and is not needed on my end. I will not be asking for the report of a home inspection. That is not something that the lending side will do. And, and again, I can't stress this enough because any home, first time home buyer goes through it and, and I talk to them and I always do surveys with them after and they always tell me how overwhelming it is. To, to, to get an email or phone calls from title stating that they need to wire funds or bring in the EMD. And then they get emails and phone calls from me saying, Hey, I need updated pay stubs and we need to order this appraisal. And then they get the home inspector. Hey, when can I schedule? And there's a lot that's going to be coming out. A lot can be coming to you. Understand that everybody is different and you are the main act in this 30 day, what hopefully is not a circus, but you are the main act and we are yeah. coming to you because you are the decision maker. This is your house, yeah. but just understand that the appraisal is set something separate for the financing arm. And we tried to get that ordered as quick as possible. So you have your information in early enough time to make your decision whether or not to go forward with it. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And again, a lot of this, uh, the bulk of this guys, you know, that first week is going to be a little bit kind of crazy, a little bit, a lot busier, mm -hmm. but just know that it does slow down. Mm -hmm. Things start falling in place. Uh, once all, all everything is underway, once the appraiser scheduled the home inspector, all that, then it does slow down. Um, now back to the home inspection report, right? So we had the home inspector go out there. They, they uncovered a lot of things, everything about the home. Uh, the termite inspector went out there. He uncovered everything about the home. Now what we do now, once those inspections are completed, you know, we wait a couple of days, a day or so for the reports to come in. OK, so once we do receive the home inspection report, which you will get a full copy of that as well mm. and a termite uh, inspection report, uh, we'll get together, whether it's via phone or we meet in person and we just go over the reports. And this is the time where we go over the main concerns, you know, you as a buyer. And me as well, things that I may suggest as well that I would say, hey, this is a concern. We want to we want to ask the seller to um, to fix this or give a credit. So there is. So once we review everything on these reports, guys, we're going to figure out, you know, we're going to make an itemized list and it's and we're going to fill out a form called the Rep request for repair. So this is the time where we can make a list of things that are very concerning to me and you that we're going to ask the seller to either fix, uh, give a credit for, um, or they can reduce the price based on the findings. You know, so uh, if there's some leaks going on, say there's some roof issues or, uh, you know, plumbing issues, we can itemize everything on there and then send that in. And now, mind you, the sellers do have options at that point. So this is where it's kind of like a second round of negotiation kind of happens. And, um, you know, a good agent will definitely negotiate everything on your behalf the right way. Um, but yeah, so this is, this is where we send the list in and wait for the, for the sellers to let us know how they're going to reply. Um, again, they do have a right to say, you know, pick and choose to do certain things on that list. And then we negotiate to, make everyone happy. The objective is that everyone's happy, everyone's satisfied, and we can move forward to the next next process, next stage. Um, but, um, but yeah, so they have an option to either reject it, they can do everything on there and accept it, or you, a lot of times um, sellers and buyers agree to a credit, you know, at close. So in lieu of, you know, maybe 10 items that we're, we're calling out, they may, you know, maybe sum them up and say, well, we're going to credit the buyer seven thousand dollars towards their closing cost um now you as a buyer we can discuss that and if that's comfortable to you based on the findings and and it seems like it's um 
it's going to cover a lot of the things, issues you have. We can move forward and accept that. And so what that means at closing, um, the seller is going to contribute the 7000 towards your closing costs, which will be a lot less for you to, to bring to close. Um, so is that something you want to touch on? Or you, you, that's pretty much, uh, th yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty the the basis of that, the inspections uh, part part of it, process of it. Um, real quick, also too, guys, within that first 17 days, we're also, we're doing the home inspection, termite inspection. We're also reviewing all the seller disclosures. And what that is, there's a series of documents that the seller is going to provide you uh, to review, and it's going to be everything they know about the home. What, what uh, if they've done any painting? If they've done any repairs? If they've ever had any, you know, plumbing, uh, roof leaks, uh, anything about the property to their best knowledge? They're going to provide it to us within the first, uh, typically seven days. Uh, but those whole 17, 17 days, we can review all that. But within the first seven days, they're going to send us what is called a transfer, a real estate transfer disclosure statement and a seller property questionnaire. Those are the two most important forms in the beginning that every seller will provide you as the buyer. Basically, again, telling you everything about the home that to to their best of knowledge. So just like I had said, if there's any issues or anything wrong with it, modifications to the home, um, just a, a bunch of variety of things. So we'll, we'll have a good idea of what, uh, what's going on with the house initially as well in those first 17 days. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Go guys, my escrow uh, park? Huh? Want to go on my escrow sure. park? Your what? Escrow park. Go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. Okay. So, right. yeah. So CD, um, the two letters C and D is, is, a. Uh, an acronym for, or just an abbreviation for closing disclosure. Um, anytime that you go into a, um, you know, a mortgage transaction, you're going to get in the very beginning, some initial disclosures separate from the disclosures that the sellers have for, you know, on the realtor side, you're going to get some initial disclosures all regarding your loan and, and um, any, any, you know, lending disclosures that we need to give to you. Mm -hmm. Part of that initial disclosure is going to have a loan estimate. On the loan estimate, it's going to break down the terms and the financing that, that you're looking to to take on this new mortgage. Now, as we get closer to the end and a lot of our those conditions that we were talking about get, get fulfilled and cleared, um, we're going to be given the okay to, to send out what's called a closing disclosure. This closing disclosure is an intent to proceed with closing. The numbers may be the same. The numbers may be a little bit different than the loan estimate, but understand that the closing disclosure does not mean that these numbers are final. What we do need to do is have you acknowledge these the closing disclosures, review these closing disclosures, and sign them. Once we sign them, it starts what's called a cooling off period. That means that no, no sooner than three days from when we sign, we're able to close. Doesn't mean we have to, um, but if we don't sign those, we will not start that clock. So every lender is a little bit different. Every file is a little bit different. It's very, very likely for a, a closing disclosure to come out five, six days into an escrow process. Um, you know, but it's also possible that it comes out on day 20, day 21, 22. Um, but just know that when this closing disclosure comes out, that means for the most part, everything has been reviewed by the bank and we're getting pretty close to clearing this thing to close. Um, again, once this comes, you're going to see these numbers. The form is going to look very similar to the initial loan estimate. Um, some of the numbers may be different, but none of these numbers are final. So get with your loan officer. If you need them to go line item by line item and explain what each of these line items mean on this closing disclosure, absolutely do that. They should not be shy or, or, or stray away from wanting to do that with you. This is going to have everything that's going to be included in your closing cost broken down on here. Okay. So once this is reviewed and signed, this is your intent to proceed with closing. Um, that's that gets us one step closer. And once we have the clear to close, as long as it's three days past, if you sign a CD on the 14th, you're eligible to close and sign final documents on the 17th. Okay. If we do not sign that, that clock does not start. So uh, once mm -hmm. that comes out, you know, you're getting towards the end, but again, don't think that those numbers are final just because it says closing disclosure, because things like repair requests, 
happen. And if the sellers are going to give you seven grand, well, then the numbers are going to look a whole lot different on that closing disclosure. So everything is, excuse me, everything is still eligible for adjustment. Um, there's still room for negotiation. Uh, there may be, you know, some fees that are going to be removed or lowered just depending on title. There's a lot that that can change throughout this process. So none of, the, none of these numbers are final until we get the final closing generated package. And that is, again, not until we get that clear to close status. So mm -hmm. CD comes out it's very important for time, time sensitive documents. And it's also important because it indicates that we're getting pretty close to closing this thing up. Nice, nice. And last, the the finale, the grand finale day, guys, two days, about one or two days prior to the closing day, what we're going to do is go back to the house one last time. Uh, and this is called the final walkthrough. So about two or a day or two before the closing, we're going to get together. We're going to go to the house one last time. And basically all we're looking for right now is just making sure the house is similar condition as it was when we first saw it, you know, as long as there's no new, uh, new holes in the wall or, you know, uh, just completely destroyed. I mean, usually that's not the case, but it's always good to just to double check, uh, you know, like a day before closing, uh, to give that green light just to make sure everything's good to go. Um, so once we're done with that guys, uh, the rest, we're just sitting back. Um, basically what you're doing from here after the uh, final walkthrough it's just, uh, you know, starting to, you know, pack and hopefully you've already, uh, you know, got your furniture and stuff ready for the home and your plans, how you're going to decorate, because the next thing that's going to happen is just wait for a call from me to give you the great news that we officially closed and uh, we'll schedule a time to meet at the home. And this is the fun part. This is when I get to meet you at the home and come with the balloons and the the champagne and the and the magic and the key, the gold key, key day. Yeah. and hand it over to you and uh, for your new home. So that's pretty much the process. And then that's when the magic and the celebration happens. And just uh, just like make sure you invite me to the the house when you <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring a great bottle of wine. But yeah, guy, that's pretty much it. And then boom, new house. Congratulations, you made it. And uh, and that's it. It's a beautiful thing once that happens. And Absolutely. It, yeah. So. One, one the closing one, remarks. Yeah, one one last thing too is um it's totally up to you as the home buyer. Majority of these of these uh, processes are handled electronically, so a lot of the stuff uh, like submitting the offer, yeah. uh, getting your inspection report, paying for the appraisal, sure. signing sure. initial disclosures on my end, a lot of that will be electronically. Sure. Uh, as long as you guys are okay with that, it does speed things up. Um, if we wet sign, then the entire process has to be wet signed at least on on my end. Um, so it does speed things up to do things electronically. Sure. Um, however, before we get to that key day, when you're signing the final closing package, that 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 right there, that appointment will be with a notary in person. So you right. will have to be physically in person. If you're out of the state, mm -hmm. you can have a notary somewhere local to your area that you're at. And what they'll have to do is they'll have to overnight your signed portion of the documents to title. Um, so that may cause a mm -hmm. slight delay there. If you're out of the country, you need to get to a U.S. embassy in order to have a notary there to sign the, this, this is a legal, you know, mortgage transaction. So this is a federal, this is a federal transaction. So the final documents will be in person, wet signed with a notary, right. uh, but but majority of it will be electronically signed. Sure. So. And that happens again a couple of days before closing, Correct. two or three days. Uh, right. You'll meet, yeah, exactly. Uh, all the loan documents and uh, around uh, right around the time we do the final walkthrough. Sometimes we do it on the same day. You can sign documents in the morning, and then we do the final walkthrough in the afternoon. Make sure everything's good to go, and we sit back for the for the closing. You know what? Another quick another quick thing I always get to at that signing. Um, you, you go there, uh, a lot of times I get asked, Hey, what do I need to bring? Um, you need your ID and, uh, you need, you need, you need a pen. That's it really. <laughs> um, now at this point, all you've given is in any inspection appraisal costs and your EMD, you have not given the full down payment yet. When you go to sign in person, you're going to get instructions for the remaining balance. Uh, based on whatever title company that we're using here or the sellers choose, um, they're going to have a couple different ways for you to pay that remaining balance. After you sign, best practice is to go straight to the bank and wire it, straight to the bank and get a cashier's check and take it to title. 
Uh, but that will be the remainder because again, mm -hmm. the EMD is just a portion right. of what your down payment is. That remaining balance, you do not need to take to the signing. You will find out what that is in signing, or you can find out ahead of time from me, uh, from the title company. You can find out ahead of time, but no, nobody at the notary is expecting you to take it there unless you're notarizing it at the title company. Mm -hmm. Then two birds, one stone. Notarize the paperwork, go right across the hall, deliver the check, done deal. You're done. Go about okay. your business and just sit back and wait for that that great call with the congratulations that's it. attached to it. And woohoo, we did it. <laughs> that's it. That's oh, it. man. Well, that's it, guys. I don't know if you have. Uh, I, I appreciate you guys joining us and taking time. Hopefully this was super helpful. Uh, we tried to be as detailed as possible. But, hey, our phone lines are always open. Social media is always open. You can find us anywhere. Um, we all, we love questions. If you got any additional questions, contact Mark, contact me. Uh, we can answer anything else further there guys. And yeah, absolutely. You can reach me at uh five, five, nine, three, zero, one, zero, eight, three, three, or on Instagram or, uh, Instagram is M Rocha home loans. Mm -hmm. Um, and Facebook is uh Mark Rocha mortgage loan originator. So, yeah. well, I might as well get my number yeah. five, five, nine, seven, two, one. 4313. Uh, I'm on social media, Real Estate Rich Jackson. You can find me everywhere on there. Uh, also, guys, we do a little podcast called The Heat Speakers. So you may want to check out some of those episodes because uh, it's a lot of great content. Absolutely. And uh, in some of those episodes, we also touch on the process. So you might, I'm sure you'll learn a lot from those. But, um, but thanks for joining us, guys. Hopefully this was helpful. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, you guys be blessed and go find the new home. We'll be hearing from you soon. Take care. Bye. Yeah. <clears throat> now, remember, as the buyer, you're going to have a couple different lanes wide open to you with people communicating to you, asking for certain things to be done. Um, he spoke about inspections and you're going to be on the phone with him with disclosures and, and things like that with your realtor and, and your home inspectors. On the financing side, we did our initial pre-approval, but my ultimate goal is to make sure that you have your funds, your portion of it, and the remaining 95, 96% that we're borrowing from the bank is at title ready to close by the time you guys finish all of your negotiation portions. So in order to do that, we have to go into what's called underwriting. All the documents that I collected from you in the beginning, everything that I ran through and, and underwrote on my own, stating that, you know what, based on what I see, we can afford this home. What I then have to do is deliver all of those documents in this escrow period to the bank that we intend on using to fund the rest of your deal. Because remember, you're only putting 3.5% down. The other 96.5%, you're borrowing and making monthly payments on. That is what your mortgage is, that, that portion that you're borrowing. Well, in order to get that 96.5%, which is almost the entire cost of the house, in order to get that from the bank, they're going to want to make sure that their investment is safe. And by by do, and in order to do that, they're going to want to look at all the same documents that I looked at ahead of time. When I deliver that to that bank, that is us going into underwriting. There's people at that bank that are going to go through the files the same way that I did, and they're going to say, yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Home Buyer, they're good to go. They're good to go. Or they're going to say they're approved with conditions. While you're going through this escrow process with inspections and doing due diligence, you're also going through uh, underwriting with your lender. So we will go into underwriting. The, the plan and what should be happening is that Anything that the bank is asking from us in order to secure the funds for this loan, for the most part, we can handle on the back end, some admin stuff, some, excuse me, some things we get from the title company, some, most of it should not be coming from you. But every once in a while, there will be something that comes up. Hey, there was a large deposit on the bank statement. Can you tell me where this is from? Can we source where this $5,000 came from that's in, that's on the bank statement? Can you, it says that there's child support that ended in 2020 on, on the credit report. Can we get the court order that 
confirms that it did in fact end and they do not still have a child support payment. There's a lot of things that could potentially pop up solar. If there's solar on the house, there's going to, they're going to want documents. So sometimes they will say in underwriting, Hey man, uh, Mark, you did a great job. They, they are approved, but there's a couple documents that we need. So approved with conditions, we will reach out to you in a separate email, completely different than the appraiser. I mean, the inspector is completely different than EMD, which is why I'm, I'm, I'm preparing you guys for a ton of different people asking for things because I may need a couple documents to um, prove or document or, or to ensure that what we, what we have in our application is actually accurate. Once all of that is cleared, we're going to get what's called the clear to close. Right. And that is on the financing side. So, it's very, very possible for us on the financing side for you to deliver all of the documents that are requested within one, two, three days. We deliver it to the underwriters. They say, Mark, this is exactly what we needed from your home buyers. You are cleared to close. Where do we send the remainder, this 96.5% of this purchase price? What, what title company do we send it to and let it sit there until everybody is ready to close. Mm. That is what is getting cl the clear to close on the financing side. And then you would just be taking care of any other portions that maybe haven't been taken care of yet. Um, more often than not, the getting the clear to close will be last. Uh, that, that's something that will come towards the end because there's just a lot more um, underwriting that goes with somebody lending out three, three hundred fifty, four hundred thousand dollars to somebody. They're really going to vet it and make sure that all of the the T's have been crossed and the I's have been dotted. Um, and by they, I mean the people, the bank. The bank is going to make sure that that they've got everything that they need from you um, in order to finance this deal. Mm -hmm. So as you're going through escrow, that is what my my involvement with you will be regarding financing and financing only. Um, there, like I said, there's going to be a lot of people asking you for things, but mm -hmm. just your lender alone is going to be all of the financing issues. Getting that clear to close mm -hmm. means, okay, I can shut down this lane. This guy's no longer going to ask me for anything. Let's focus on, you know, whatever my realtor needs from me, whatever the title company needs from me. Cause like I said, everybody is going to have different requirements, different documents, and they're all doing their same, their own thing. Um, to accomplish one goal, but we all have our own separate things that we need. So mm -hmm. as we're going through escrow, that is when you'll hear from me if we need some additional documentation, some additional proof, uh, you know, or, you know, just an explanation from you. Um, it could be very simple stuff. It, it, it may not require a lot or mm -hmm. some people with uh, what we call, you know, if you, if there's a lot of hair on the loan means that we might have seven, eight, nine different conditions to, to complete. And that's, seven, eight, nine different things that we'll need your help with. So uh, every everybody's situation is a little bit different. And um, that is what we go through escrow on the financing side. And also before I want you to touch on what the CD is issued, but prior, I just want to recap real quick, guys. So just keep in mind, once you're accepted, your offer is accepted, that first 17 days, a lot is going to happen in those days right. right there. Okay. So again, just to recap, your earnest money uh, is going to be deposited. Your appraisal will be ordered. From the, with your lender, the home inspection will be uh, scheduled. So, and, and just on the home inspection too, guys, just know this, you're more than welcome to go to the home inspection. So if you can, you do not have to be there. So say we, the home inspection is set for Thursday at 2 PM, but you're at work until five, no worries. You don't have to be there. Or if you get off a little early, you can always go for a portion of it or, but you do not have to be there. The home inspector is still going to be there. He's going to do about two or three hours, do a full inspection and uh, and email you the findings, the, the report within a day or two later. The same with the termite inspector. So again, you're going to have the, the home inspection as well. The termite inspector within those 17 days, we're going to uh, put together a good list of, you know, items on that home inspection and termite report that you're, you know, we would like the seller to fix or give credit for. Um at the same time, you're going to be reviewing all the disclosures from the seller. They're going to be sending us all the papers based on their knowledge of the house. So we should, at this point, guys, at, within that 17 days, we should have a great clear picture of the house, what's happening around the, the surroundings of it. Um, and then at, once all those check, check out, you know, we come to a great agreement with the seller on, you know, the repairs requested, they're going to do this, this, and everyone's happy. Um, man, that's, the bulk of it now it's pretty much downhill from there guys uh 
Um, the magic word is what we look for is an email from the lender that says clear to close. Um, and also, I believe at that time, Mark, that's when uh, the CD is sent out to the buyers to sign. Correct. Yeah. So CD, um, the two letters, C and D, is, is a, an acronym for or just an abbreviation for closing disclosure. Um, anytime that you go into a um, you know, mortgage transaction, you're going to get in the very beginning some initial disclosures separate from the disclosures that the sellers have for, you know, on the realtor side. You're going to get some initial disclosures all regarding your loan and and um, any any, you know, lending disclosures that we need to give to you. Mm -hmm. Part of that initial disclosure is going to have a loan estimate on the loan estimate. It's going to break down the terms and the financing that, that you're looking to to take on this new mortgage. Now. As we get closer to the end and a lot of our those conditions that we were talking about get get fulfilled and cleared, um, we're going to be given the okay to, to send out what's called a closing disclosure. This closing disclosure is an intent to proceed with closing. The numbers may be the same. The numbers may be a little bit different than the loan estimate, but understand that the closing disclosure does not mean that these numbers are final. What we do need to do is have you acknowledge these the closing disclosures, review these closing disclosures, and sign them. Once we sign them, it starts what's called a cooling off period. That means that no no sooner than three days from when we sign, we're able to close. Doesn't mean we have to, um, but if we don't sign those, we will not start that clock. So. Every lender is a little bit different. Every file is a little bit different. It's very, very likely for a, a closing disclosure to come out five, six days into an escrow process. Um, you know, but it's also possible that it comes out on day 20, day 21, 22. Um, but just know that when this closing disclosure comes out, that means for the most part, everything has been reviewed by the bank and we're getting pretty close to clearing this thing to close. Um, again, once this comes, you're going to see these numbers. The form is going to look very similar to the initial loan estimate. Um, some of the numbers may be different, but none of these numbers are final. So get with your loan officer. If you need them to go line item by line item and explain what each of these line items mean on this closing disclosure, absolutely do that. They should not be shy or, or, or stray away from wanting to do that with you. This is going to have everything that's going to be included in your closing cost broken down on here. Okay. So once this is reviewed and signed, this is your intent to proceed with closing. Um, that's that gets us one step closer. And once we have the clear to close, as long as it's three days past, if you sign a CD on the 14th, you're eligible to close and sign final documents on the 17th. OK, if we do not sign that, that clock does not start. So uh, once mm -hmm. that comes out, you know, you're getting towards the end. But again, don't think that those numbers are final just because it says closing disclosure, because things like repair requests happen. And if the sellers are going to give you seven grand, well, then the numbers are going to look a whole lot different on that closing disclosure. So everything is, excuse me, everything is still eligible for adjustment. Um, there's still room for negotiation. Uh, there may be, you know, some fees that are going to be removed or lowered just depending on title. There's a lot that, that can change throughout this process. So none of the, none of these numbers are final until we get the final closing generated package. And that is again, not until we get that clear to close status. So mm -hmm. CD comes out very important for time, time sensitive documents. And it's also important because it indicates that we're getting pretty close to closing this thing. up. Nice. Nice. And last, the, the finale, the grand finale day guys, two days, about one or two days prior to the closing day, what we're going to do is go back to the house one last time. Uh, and this is called the final walkthrough. So about two or a day or two before the closing, we're going to get together. We're going to go to the house one last time. And basically all we're looking for right now is just making sure the house is similar condition as it was when we first saw it, you know, as long as there's no new, uh, new holes in the wall or, you know, uh, just completely destroyed. I mean, usually that's not the case, but it's always good to just to double check, uh, you know, like a day before closing, uh, to give that green light just to make sure everything's good to go. Um, so once we're done with that, guys, uh, the rest, we're just sitting back. Um, basically what you're doing from here after the uh, final walkthrough is just, uh, you know, starting to, you know, 
pack and hopefully you've already, uh, you know, got your furniture and stuff ready for the home and your plans, how you're going to decorate because the next thing that's going to happen is just wait for a call from me to give you the great news that we officially closed and uh, we'll schedule a time to meet at the home. And this is the fun part. This is when I get to meet you at the home and come with the balloons and the the champagne and the and the magic and the key, the gold key, key day. Yeah. and hand it over to you and uh, for your new home. So that's pretty much the process. And then that's when the magic and the celebration happens. And just uh, just like make sure you invite me to the, the house when we find <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring a great bottle of wine. But yeah, guy, that's pretty much it. And then boom, new house. Congratulations. You made it. And uh, and that's it. It's a beautiful thing once that happens. And Absolutely. It, yeah. So. One, one the closing one, remarks. Yeah, one one last thing too is um it's totally up to you as the home buyer. Majority of these of these uh, processes are handled electronically, so a lot of the stuff uh, like submitting the offer, yeah. uh, getting your inspection report, paying for the appraisal, sure. signing initial disclosures on my end, a lot of that will be electronically. Sure. Uh, as long as you guys are okay with that, it does speed things up. Um, if we wet sign, then the entire process has to be wet signed at least on on my end. Um, so it does speed things up to do things electronically. Sure. Um, however, before we get to that key day, when you're signing the final closing package, that 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 right there, that appointment will be with a notary in person. So you right. will have to be physically in person. If you're out of the state, mm -hmm. you can have a notary somewhere local to your area that you're at. And what they'll have to do is they'll have to overnight your signed portion of the documents to title. Um, so that may cause a mm -hmm. slight delay there. If you're out of the country, you need to get to a U.S. embassy in order to have a notary there to sign the, this, this is a legal, you know, mortgage transaction. So this is a federal, this is a federal transaction. So the final documents will be in person, with wet them. signed with a notary. Right. Uh, but, but majority of it will be electronically signed. Sure. So. And that happens again, a couple of days before closing Correct. two or three days, uh, you'll meet. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all the loan documents and uh, around, uh, right around the time we do the final walkthrough. Sometimes we do it on the same day. You can sign documents in the morning and then we do the final walkthrough in the afternoon, make sure everything's good to go. And we sit back for the close, for the closing. You know what? Another quick, another quick thing I always get to at that signing. Um, you you go there. Uh, a lot of times I get asked, "Hey, what do I need to bring?" Um, you need your ID, and uh, you need you need you need a pen. That's it, really. <laughs> um, now, at this point, all you've given is in any inspection, appraisal costs, and your EMD. You have not given the full down payment yet. When you go to sign in person, you're going to get instructions for the remaining balance uh, based on whatever title company that we're using here or the sellers choose. Um, they're going to have a couple different ways for you to pay that remaining balance. After you sign, best practice is to go straight to the bank and wire it straight to the bank and get a cashier's check and take it to title. Uh, but that will be the remainder because again, mm -hmm. the EMD is just a portion right. of what your down payment is that remaining balance you do not need to take to the signing. You will find out what that is in signing, or you can find out ahead of time from me, uh, from the title company. You can find out ahead of time, but no, nobody at the notary is expecting you to take it there unless you're notarizing it at the title company. Mm -hmm. Then two birds, one stone. Notarize the paperwork, go right across the hall, deliver the check, done deal. You're done. Go about okay. your business and just sit back and wait for that, that great call with the congratulations that's it. attached to it. And a woo, we did it. <laughs> that's it. That's oh it. man. Well, that's it guys. I don't know if you have a, I, I appreciate you guys joining us and taking time. Hopefully this was super helpful. Uh, we tried to be as detailed as possible, but Hey, our phone lines are always open. Social media is always open. You can find us anywhere. Um, we all, we love questions. If you got any additional questions, contact Mark, contact me. Uh, we can answer anything else further there, guys. And yeah, absolutely. You can reach me at uh five five nine three zero one zero eight three three, or on Instagram or uh, Instagram is M Rocha Home Loans, mm -hmm. um, and Facebook is uh, Mark Rocha Mortgage Loan Originator. So, yeah. well, you might as well get my number yeah. five five nine seven two one four three one three. Uh, I'm on social media, Real Estate Rich Jackson. You can find me everywhere on there. Uh. Also, guys, we do a little podcast called The Heat Speakers, so you may want to check out some of those episodes because uh, it's a lot of great content. Absolutely. And uh, in some of those episodes, we also touch on the process. So you might, I'm sure you'll learn a lot from those. But 
Um, but thanks for joining us, guys. Hopefully this was helpful. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, you guys be blessed and go find a new home. We'll be hearing from you soon.